Hey everyone, so we're at Computex 2024 at the Deep Cool booth right now, and our main point of focus today is going to be on this cooler, which is a vapor chamber air cooler. So these have been a thing in the past, but it's not something you see a lot. That's gonna be what I'm focusing on because uh, basically with Intel power levels where they are these days, to keep using air cooling, there needs to be advancement. The biggest challenge though with vapor chambers is cost. So we're gonna talk about that. We also have a couple air or liquid coolers to go over. There's some stuff on the case side, not gonna spend a ton of time there today. Uh, over on this side of the table, some changes to the 400, 620 series with new variations, and then some lower profile coolers as well to discuss. But we're gonna get with the vapor chamber first, so let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Aeronaut and Hydronaut Thermal Pastes. Aeronaut is Thermal Grizzly's entry-level thermal solution, marketed as resistant to curing and for long-term endurance. Hydronaut is Thermal Grizzly's next step up, targeted for overclocking and higher performance applications. We've used Hydronaut on a lot of our systems internally over the years. You can learn more at the link in the description below. Okay, so this is the Assassin 4 Vapor Chamber Vision. The Vision part is just the screen right here. There's not going to be a non-Vision one. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. It has a readout, so we'll cover this first just because it's the easiest. Uh, they ha Why is this in Fahrenheit? It's in... Who put this in Fahrenheit? <laughs> oh, there it goes. Back to Celsius. Okay. All right. Everything's under control. It's okay. Uh, there's a temp. Is it back to... Well, I'm not sure if it's on Fahrenheit or Celsius anymore, but there is a temperature, and uh, it's up to you to choose which, which measurement system you want to use. And then we just guess. Beneath that, there's supposed to be a percent utilization. Maybe it's not... I guess because there's no CPU attached, it doesn't know what to show. Uh, wattage, and then it's supposed to pull frequency from the CPU if you had actually plugged into one. So moving on from the vision part, which I actually don't care a whole lot about, is going to be just the vapor chamber itself. This is what I'm interested in, where what Deepcool is saying is that, uh, first of all, this is tuned primarily for Intel. It would work on AMD as well. I asked them about the cold plate curvature, and if there is one, it sounds like it's almost like a, a ridge bump pattern, which I think would be because, actually, if you want to see a, uh, a magic trick that I call sleight of hand, uh, if you look at one of these, so the way vapor chambers are made, is they actually have little copper columns in here that uh, provide service area and also just some rigidity to the plate. So there's these copper columns that are gonna be all inside of here. And I'm guessing that's causing a little bit of the deformation of the surface. We'll see how it does in testing, but what Deepcool is claiming is that the, uh, for testing that they've done at 280 to 300 watts with say a 14900K, they're seeing at equivalent uh, power load for the older Assassin 4 versus the Assassin 4 vapor chamber solution, they are seeing about a three degree difference at around 280 watts or to 300 watts. Uh, and then the other way to look at it, they were saying was approximately a 20 watt reduction uh, in terms of what their TDP rating is. TDP doesn't really mean a whole lot. Manufacturers all define it different ways. So the part that matters is temperature or a power normalized is a, about a three degree difference. There's no pricing yet. It's going to be high because they're putting a screen and a vapor chamber on an air cooler. The Assassin 4 is already around 100 bucks these days uh, for fans. So internally, there is the recessed fan here. This is the 4S solution. So they have a, a relatively new Assassin 4S we've already talked about. So that's going to be the S variant of the fan. And then the original Assassin 4 fan on the back. Um, so other than that, I mean, it's the same seven heat pipes. Uh, it's got like kind of a, a trapezoidal support on the opposing side just for some rigidity and we'll see how it does in testing. I think that's all I had for the notes here. Uh, one more thing. So the um, heat pipes are press fit into the fins as well. They can maybe try and get some more performance out of soldering, but uh, that costs more as well. So, all right, we'll come back to that one. Shipping is supposed to be sometime this year. It looks like maybe August, no price yet. Come on over to this side. So the AK620 Digital Pro, is a variation on the AK620 that we previously reviewed. The AK620, when it first came out, we liked it for its simplicity. It was a very uh, cost-effective cooler, no frills, and basically just got the job done, two fans. And this is sort of the, the opposite in the sense that they've added a ginormous screen to it. So you can see that up here if we come in. This is uh, just a digital display. It's not like a full-on LCD or anything. Showing temperature, this one, not moving between Celsius and Fahrenheit, so that's great. Uh, and then it's got power below it and watts, usage, 
frequency, and I think it's pulling that data from USB 2. So back here, if you come around the side here, you can see they've got a USB 2 header plugged in. It's just going to power right now because there's no actual CPU under it. Um, this one is also coming out somewhere in the July to August time frame. Uh, I don't have firm pricing on it. They have changed the fan, though, so there's going to be a new fan on there. Uh, the AK400 series is the same treatment, so it's got the screen on it now. We're not going to spend any time here. They've taken the AK400, they threw a screen on it, and, uh, and that's going to be the new cooler. The AK400 and the 620 already did well reasonably in our testing anyway. The only other difference for the 400, the 600, or 620 is the fans. They've changed to an FT120 SE. The reasoning for that was to get rid of a noise problem, they said, uh, which was basically like a lower frequency sort of hum from the original. So. These, I think we've also talked about. So um, the AN600 we showed previously, that was a larger 120 mil uh, tower. This is a smaller form factor AN400 cooler. And uh, if you look at the fans, actually, these are some that are just off. So this is the one where they kind of debuted the clear uh, shot down into the hub. So you can see the electromagnet um, and then it's illuminated around the edges. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have a, without prices, like, I don't really know what what to convey because all of it's going to be checked back later for pricing. But okay, let's move over to one quick thing over here. Now for cases, uh, the only thing I want to point out is they've got these pixel kits. So last year we showed Deepcool was playing around with the Morpheus case and some other designs. So this is a CH560, uh, and it's basically perforated as you'd expect for just airflow. But then they made it a uh, a size that you can fit in these little. I don't know if it's. It feels like a rubber. Uh, they're calling it pixels. So these, the, you're supposed to be able to submit a receipt showing you've purchased the case to get the full kit. They're doing 100 of each of the rubber pixels. Uh, it's an art thing. You, you set up the display with whatever character you might want on it, uh, and then you block airflow at the same time. So go, go easy on how heavy that is. All right, so that's going to cover it for the Deep Cool booth. A couple thoughts. Uh, first of all, I don't have like any prices, which drives me a little crazy, but um, to give some comparison points, the cooler market right now is primarily interesting because at the really high end of heat load from especially Intel and AM5, at least the 7000 series, the biggest problem tends to be you really just have to get into liquid like CLCs once you're in that uh, 4900K territory and um, it's possible to run it air cooled. So for every 10 degrees or so reduction, uh, typically on the CPU, you end up with a 4% reduction in power leakage. And uh, that just happens from heat waste. If you can bring the temperature of the CPU down, it will also inherently help to control the power consumption. We've seen this in our own AM4 test bench, where if we run the best cooler on it at 198 watt heat load, it'll be maybe like 192 watts or something. You're on the worst one, it might be like 200, 202. Uh, so there is value to increasing the thermal performance beyond just running with inspect. And that's kind of where the CLCs right now really prove themselves. Uh, aside from noise normalized thermals, where you can bring it down and just run it quieter for the same thermal performance. So uh, the air cooler market, in order to keep pace, if Intel keeps the power level as high as it is, will have to iterate somehow because right now the best air coolers, they all kind of get bound up around the same region eventually. As good as the PA120, uh, the Peerless Assassin 120 is, and the AK620 and all these coolers, they get stuck. So really curious about the vapor chamber solution. Um, they are typically expensive. We'll see what it costs. If it starts costing what an AIO cost, then that's obviously gonna be a different problem. But that's it for the Deep Cool booth. I wish I had some prices for you. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more and check back for the rest of the coverage of the show. We'll see you all next time.